Stuff all over the desk. What is this? Oh no. We're gonna build a computer. If it's your first time ever building a machine, welcome. Uh, we're gonna have a lot of fun. If you're a former console gamer, welcome to the club. It's it's a nice, happy family, isn't it? Isn't it? <laughs> Indeed. If you guys do have questions, the first place you should go is to techsyndicate.com and hop in the forum. There's a lot of guys there, a lot of information, and you'll get answers quickly. One thing I'm gonna do that I've never seen done before is put this on the screen. That's, um, that is a table of contents. So you can just click on any of those things and go right to the spot that you need. If you're having trouble with those damn push pins, we'll click on damn push pins. You know how it works. I'm gonna leave it on the screen for about three more seconds to give you some time. You should watch the entire video, but you know, if you're someone who's coming back and you need to just see one thing, that's what really this is for. And it's gone. Table of contents is over. I think it's about time that we get down to business with a new PC. So what do we need? Cooler, hard drives. You're gonna need some RAM, CPU, get yourself a motherboard, you're going to need an optical drive as well. Got to have power. That's a power supply from Corsair. Graphics card. And you're going to need a case. Special thanks to A-Data for sending over the SX900. It's a really fast, really awesome SSD. We're having a lot of fun with it. Let's prepare the case, shall we? All right, take off both side panels. Pretty easy to take off. Uh, most have two screws, one at the top and the bottom. You, you remove that. Go ahead and take the side panel off. Set it aside. And as you can see here, we have a lot of cable routing options. I really like that. That's something I really look for in a case. And the power supply goes in the bottom. I like that as well because the heat will go out the bottom instead of, you know, being on top and shooting heat all over your CPU. Uh, one other thing that's nice about this, uh, if you look right there where the CPU is going to be, there's a nice hole cut out. So if you ever wanted to mount, you know, a backplate or something like that, you can install the CPU fan right there. The top is pretty easy to take off. Most just have a couple screws. Some just pop off with pressure. But let's go ahead and take the top off as well uh, and go ahead and prep your case because we're going to install a special cooler so we need to take this fan off the top we're going to install an h100 and it's going to go right where this fan was we're going to keep that fan maybe we'll use it later this is your uh, back plate each motherboard has a separate back plate they're totally different so go ahead and install that now it goes in there be careful with the edges they can cut you you just want to get firm pressure all the way around the edges if it doesn't snap it's not in all the way and uh, you want to make sure it snaps in or else your motherboard's not going to go in correctly. All right, let's talk about standoff screws. Standoff screws all must be the same size. Now, what I like to do is just kind of get a visual first. Sometimes I put the motherboard in, sometimes I do not. You can also put a piece of paper underneath the motherboard and draw X's wherever there needs to be a standoff screw. And I would recommend doing this as opposed to like just looking up, oh, I've got an ATX motherboard. All the standoffs should be in one spot. No, sometimes they're in different spots. So go ahead and screw all of the ones that correspond to your motherboard in. And again, it's very important that they're all the same size. You can run into a lot of problems if you mix and match with generic ones. So after those are all screwed in, we can put the motherboard in. Now it's usually uh, best practice to install the cooling fan after the motherboard is in. Uh, sometimes I do it before, but it can bend the motherboard. It's much easier to do it before it gets in there. So that's why I usually do it before. I've never run into any problems, but People, a lot of people frown on that. These are motherboard screws. Now line up the holes in the motherboard with the standoffs, put a screw in there. I like to screw one down on one side and then move to the other side of the motherboard and screw one down on that side and keep doing that. Uh, that keeps things balanced to make sure everything's in the right spot. Now this is socket 2011 that we're using here. So this one has two levers that we're gonna need to uh, pull up. Just apply a little pressure and slide those things out, pull them up. Remember the order that you pulled them up. When you open it up, you'll see a field of pins. It's pretty, but don't touch it. Look around all the corners. You're gonna see one corner that has a triangle. That corner is special because it corresponds to the corner of your CPU that also has a triangle. Just set it in there. As long as it's uh, in the right spot, it should be just fine. Now let's go ahead and install our CPU. Be very careful when you take it out and never ever touch the bottom of the CPU. It really doesn't like human oils. So place it in very carefully. Now there is some force when you press this down. Press down the first one first. Remember which way you took them out. And then we're gonna press down the uh, second one there. Most of the other modern uh, Intel CPU sockets are like this. There's one lever, you open it up, and uh, that's all there is to it. Go ahead and set your CPU in there. Uh, these are much smaller than socket 2011. Socket 2011 is absolutely mammoth, so this is a little bit smaller. Still pretty fast though. Make sure that corner is lined up corner always has to be lined up and very carefully close that 
fits in there like that. And then you just give it a little bit of pressure and you will hear some crunching, like mash down. Those pins are mashing into the CPU. This is an AMD CPU. AMD CPUs have the pins on the actual chip instead of having the pins on the CPU socket. So there you can see all these pins, a field of pins. Now this one, very simple, you just open it up. There's no insertion force. They call it a ZIF socket zero insertion force. You just set it in there. It's very easy, like way easier than the Intel's. And then you push the clamp back down and you're done. All right, it's time to install the thermal paste. You just want a little bit in the middle. I mean, the size of a grain of rice is all you need. You do not need to cover everything. This is simulating uh, what's gonna happen when you press your CPU heatsink on. If you wanna see how to really do this, watch this video. I made an entire video just to show you guys how to install thermal paste. It's very important, so watch that video. There's a lot of different fans out there, a lot of different heat sinks. You want one that has good thermal mass meaning that's a little bit heavy. Some of these large ones, yeah, they're really large, they've got good thermal mass, but you can get a small one that has good thermal mass as well. And then of course, water blocks do a really good job. This is a backplate, you mount this behind the CPU on the back of the motherboard. Uh, some of the larger cooling units will require one of these, and I usually prefer ones that do. The damned push pin design. Press the pin down, it separates the two white clips, pull it out, and the white clips can go back together. Now, do not try to insert this with the pin pressed down. The clips will be expanded and it's gonna break something. People do this all the time, it's stupidity. Make a half turn, pull the pin back out, push the clips together, and then we're gonna put the clips through the hole before depressing the pin. There's our clip on the other side. Now, firm pressure on opposite sides, press it down, and then do the same for the other two opposite sides. Just firm pressure. It will emerge into the female, with the Discovery Channel here. Oh God, that's obscene. That's what's happening. See the clips have moved apart. This is AMD's current cooling mechanism. You see we have a clamp here with a lever. And uh, if we flip it around to the other side, we have another clamp without a lever. There it is, look at that epic zoom in, oh my god. Now we're just gonna set this right on top of the CPU. There's already thermal paste installed on the bottom of this, but normally we would put our thermal paste down first. Uh, hook the clamp around this little plastic nub. I don't know the scientific name, I'm not gonna look it up either, so too bad. Flip it around and do the other, uh, the other side as well. I usually do the side with the lever last, so that way you can lock it down. Now we simply just grab the lever and uh, turn it. It will put pressure on the CPU and make sure everything stays nice and cool. Oh yeah, and after you uh, install your heatsink and fan, you wanna make sure you always plug in your CPU fan. If you don't, you're gonna start a fire and uh, burn your computer down. And that's not funny. Not even if it happens to a clown computer. Now since we're going with an all-in-one water cooling kit, I'm gonna go ahead and install that now. Uh, first thing I like to do is cover the CPU with something. This is a warranty card. It's like a 16 point stock, so that'll work. If I drop a screw or something, it will not scratch my CPU. Now just uh, pick your spot, you know, on the back or on the top of the case and screw in your uh, your H100, your water cooling kit, your radiator, your fans. Should be pretty easy. I'm not gonna insult your intelligence. There's always instructions in the box and everyone's different. Now, uh, most water cooling kits do require a back plate, but the X79 motherboards already have one built in, so I just need to put a few standoff screws in there, and uh, I'm good to go. Now, this is the bottom of the, uh, the water block. It's already got thermal paste installed. It's usually a pretty even layer. Sometimes I'll, I'll take that off and put a smaller layer on there. You don't really need too much, but my temps have not been too bad, and I've done this a few times with an H100, so go ahead and put it on there, and you want to screw down one corner, and then move across and screw down the opposite corner. It's always good to tighten a little on each corner, that way it goes on evenly. There's many ways to install RAM. Triple channel, single channel, dual channel, quad channel. Uh, it, it gets kind of crazy. Generally, it's every other socket, but check your motherboard manual. That's always a good place to start. The first thing you want to do is uh, open up the, uh, the clips on the socket. They just pop back easily. And then you want to install your RAM. It'll only go in one way. So just slide it into the sides, push it all the way down, and then firm pressure on both sides. Make sure you push both sides at the same time. If you do it correctly, the clips will snap back into place. Same thing for the second socket. Just firm pressure on each side and it pops into place. This is quad channel memory. So we're still using every other socket because we have four sockets on one side of the CPU and four sockets on the other. Firm pressure, there we go. And there's our four sockets for our socket 2011 build. Let's install the power supply. As you can see, we have a nice large fan here, and thanks to this uh, fractal case, we're gonna install this on the bottom, and the fan is gonna face down, meaning that all the hot air is gonna exhaust at the bottom of your case. Go ahead and put it into position. There'll be some holes that'll line up with the uh, screw holes on your power supply. So just set it in there, and then screw it down. I'm not gonna insult your intelligence. You can see the holes, they're lined up. It's very easy. 
this one has thumb screws, which is really nice, so I can do it by hand. But even if you do it by hand, I always like to grab a screwdriver and uh, just tighten it up a little bit. Not much, just a few turns, and we're all good to go. Next up, I'm going to feed all the cables to the back of the case, so then I can feed them back into the case whenever I need them. This is going to help with the clutter. Now, we have several cables. You can put them through you know, different grommets here since we have a nice case. Uh, hopefully, your case will have some options for, for routing. Take a look at the cables here. This is a PCI Express connector for the video card, 6-pin plus 2 for the bigger cards. This is our 12-volt motherboard connector. Uh, you can see it's 4 plus 4, but sometimes it'll be 8 altogether. Those are some SATA power cables. You'll see several of those in there. Then we also have the uh, Molex connectors. These will go to older hard drives and also sometimes motherboards and other peripherals will use those. That's a floppy power connector right there. You won't be using that too often these days. Let's talk about mounting options for standard mechanical hard drives. You see we have four screw holes on the bottom and that'll work in some cases, pun intended. Then we have some screw holes on the uh, side as well and that'll work in other cases. God, I'm getting really bad with the puns. I'm very, very sorry about this. SSDs have screw mounting options on the bottom. So if you flip them over there, you'll see there's four screw holes on the bottom. And sometimes the SSD will come with their own tray. Sometimes the uh, the case will come with the tray. Look at your case manual and see where it wants you to mount the SSDs. This one, the Fractal, came with a tray. So we mounted this A-Data SSD into the tray there. Now I decided to use the tray that came with the A-Data and mount that inside the tray because that aligns the A-Data to the left, which makes it just like any mechanical hard drive. I like having my uh, my plugs in line. There's also this mounting method. You see we have these uh, two brackets here that clip onto the side. There's one on one side, flip it over, and clip it onto the other side. Now some cases uh, will be like this. You just line it up, slide it in, it's very easy. And you wanna give it a push until it clicks. Done. Other hard drives you install directly into the case and then screw them in. Simple. Here we have our SATA cables. Those are L-shaped and that's the uh, standard shape. We're going to go ahead and route these through the grommets and plug them into the motherboard. Uh, just keep in mind where your 6 gigabit per second ports are and plug the appropriate hard drives into those. Now we're going to plug up more than we need and then route it around to the back, plug it into the uh, SATA drive. It'll only go in one way, so don't force it if it will not go in easily. Uh, and as you can see here, we have an extra cable because we want to, you know, make it easy to upgrade in the future. Go ahead and lay that one in there. So in the future, when you want to add a hard drive, there is already a cable waiting for you. Next up, we are going to plug in our SATA power. And again, with the SATA power, it will only go in one way. So do not force it. If it won't go in that way, I mean, you can pretty much look at it. You know, you'll see that there's a little notch on one side. Plug it in that way and everybody goes home happy and nobody gets hoid, okay? From here on out, we're gonna plug some more stuff in and route some cables, it's gonna be fun. Here's the uh, power connector. It comes in black, sometimes it comes in white. Just plug it in simply, it'll click into place. There's a wonderful, satisfying click. Look at all these cables. Just always be mindful of where these are going, manage them. You can also use uh, twisty ties to tie them down. Go to the store and buy some. They're always really handy. Make sure that those stay out of the way. Uh, we could be doing a better job at this, but uh, we're kind of in a hurry. So, Plus the side panel will cover all that. Let's look at the bottom of the motherboard. Look at all these headers. Uh, the tan ones there, those are USB. They can be various, various colors. Uh, very simple to plug in. It only goes in one way, and that's our front panel USB. That's USB 3, very distinctive plug. That's our USB 3 front panel header connector. Usually those are uh, blue, but I've seen them black as well. Very simple to plug in, and again, they only go in one direction. And remember to route that cable, so stick it in that grommet. All right, let's do our front panel connectors. Some people get very frustrated by these. Reference your manual. It'll tell you exactly what to do. Now your power and your reset switch, the polarity does not matter. You'll see a plus and a minus, but the polarity do doesn't matter. It only matters on the LEDs, like the HDD LED and the power LED. Um, you'll also notice that there is a red cable on top. Typically the colored cable is your positive and the black cable is your ne negative. So make sure that the uh, positive and negative is lined up correctly with the uh, LED plugs, just like that. And uh, this is a Q connector. It came with the ASUS. It makes things very easy. You plug it into the Q connector, and then you can plug the entire front panel connector in at the same time. God, I love that. Installing the GPU is pretty easy. You just line it up and snap it into your PCI Express slot. You can see it snapped in there. And then you screw it down. You may have to take some brackets off the back, but it's pretty easy. Next up, we're going to install our uh, power connectors. This one requires two six-pin PCI Express connectors, so we'll go ahead and install those. The extra two pins, you know, that's for if you have like a really big card with the eight-pin connector. We'll just wrap that around to keep it out of the way. It doesn't really matter. And then we'll install our other six-pin PCI Express connector and wrap the other two pins around. Yay. 
graphics card installed. We are almost finished. Just a few things left to do. We pulled the front of the case off with a little pressure, and then we're gonna pull off this uh, expansion bay cover with a little bit of pressure as well. Uh, we also have that extra fan, so let's go ahead and find a spot for that. If you have an extra span, just find a spot, put it in there. This one clips into the front, so we, we got kind of lucky there. And then we're just gonna clip the front back on. It goes on, snaps into place, very nice. Now we have two fans. And remember, fan. grab your fan nice. cables and route those. Uh, we'll plug those into the motherboard in just a second. Next up, we're gonna install our optical drive into the empty expansion bay uh, slot that we just made. And then go on the inside and simply screw it in. There'll be a few screw holes all the way around. Make sure you screw that in nice and tight. Next up, connect your power cable and your SATA cable to your optical drive. This is a fan connector. Go ahead and plug all your fans into the different fan connectors, plug them into whatever's easiest, and then route your cables. There's one there, just plug in all these fans. Having fun doing it too. So there you have it. Everything looks nice, it's ready to turn on. This video, I'm not gonna cover installing your OS because there's Linux, there's Ubuntu, <laughs> Linux and Ubuntu are the same thing. Uh, there's OS 10 if you're making a Hackintosh. Uh, then you, of course, you've got Windows 7, Windows 8, Windows XP, FreeDOS. It would be a lot to cover. Let me know which OS you'd like to see an installation of, and maybe we'll try that out in a, in a future video. But right now, it's pretty easy. You just put the, the disk into the drive, or if you have a USB drive, a lot of you guys know how to do that. It's pretty much all there is to it. If you, uh, if you followed the video and did everything right, it'll come on with no problems, and you will be a happy PC gamer very soon. Or PC video editor, or PC power user, or someone who just wants to check their email, or someone who's building a NAS. So many different things you can do with a computer. And that's why it's better than console. Am I gonna get in trouble for saying that? It's, it's better than console, I'm sorry. And like I said, if you're a console gamer, welcome. TechSyndicate.com, check out the forums. Any questions, inbox at TechSyndicate.com. I'll see you guys next time.